right, welcome back everybody. Today we are talking about Polygon or Matic, ticker M-A-T-I-C. We're gonna talk some recent bullish news, some chart analysis and price targets. And before we hop in, just wanna let you guys know, I have finished a free chart pattern guide for my subscribers. So just drop your email in the form in the description below and I will send that off to you. Now let's get started. So the first piece of bullish news is that Polygon back in February raised $450 million from Sequoia, uh, SoftBank, Tiger, Capital India, amongst others. And this is big because Sequoia invests in big software companies, um, you know, companies like Zoom, Qualtrics, you know, these big uh, software as a service companies. So to get that validation, that means that this Polygon team is working on something really special. And the other thing that's really, really cool is just how much adoption it gained last year, over a billion plus transactions in 2021, um, and it's set to blow that away this year. Uh, but what is cool on top of that is that they're bringing in some big hitters. So first of all, Ryan Watts, who uh, is decently high up in Google, came over uh, to work on Polygon Studios. That is their uh, gaming metaverse and NFT arm. So really excited to see what they do in blockchain gaming. To add to that, they also uh, added a COO of Polygon Studios that spent almost 20 years at Electronic Arts. Uh, and so he has a lot, a lot of experience in direct to consumer uh, digital gaming. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to be really important for uh, what Polygon is going to do uh, in the future and, and how they want to be successful moving forward. Um, they also uh, hired a new uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, uh, to kind of shore up their security. And the list goes on and on. I mean, they're hiring people from Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, you know, these SVPs uh, that have worked at, you know, serious companies that have serious experience scaling products, scaling, you know, very successful products. So really, uh, you know, interesting to see this, you know, another EA person right here, um, you know, AWS, um, we'll get into that a little bit, but they're building out a product similar to AWS. So they're expanding and, and reaching their arms and, and, uh, you know, creating use cases for, uh, the blockchain through Polygon, you know, to kind of serve a more B2B, uh, audience as well. And now that we get into that, you know, a really, really good way to kind of break it down is the fact that they're building these products on top of Polygon. So um, a couple here just kind of as examples. So first of all, Avail, um, this is kind of their data availability platform. This kind of helps uh, folks scale uh, the blockchain um, and, and kind of have make sure that all the data is being communicated correctly. Um, this helps with, uh, you know, essentially being a cloud provider similar to AWS uh, in tandem with uh, Polygon Edge, which basically allows people uh, to stand up their own blockchains, uh, scale their own blockchains uh, and have that implemented rather easily. And then finally, uh, Polygon Studios, which is uh, this arm that we talked about before, um, which is kind of around blockchain gaming, uh, NFTs, um, and other uh, decentralized applications. So really, really cool to see that, you know, they're building something like AWS between uh, Polygon Avail and Polygon Edge, you know, something that is one of the most popular products today uh, in AWS, you know, would be interesting to see how this comes out. Uh, from the blockchain side but it's very clear to see why serious vc firms are taking polygon serious and why polygon is starting to get some serious attention and why i'm also so bullish on it so let's hop into the charts really quick first of all um i want to point out uh just how well we've kind of come out of this uh decline so from our height uh back here in late december around three dollars uh, we saw, you know, at its lowest, close to, you know, 55, 60% drop. So going from there, you know, obviously that's not what you want to see. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we did descend pretty positively, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is we had some really, really big, uh, you know, large red candles and some large uh, down days here, you know, almost a week straight almost a week straight here. But then as you see, as we progress down that descending trend, those down periods get smaller and uh, and for shorter periods of time, right? So you see that kind of descend, it shrinks and shrinks, almost like a coil, right? And so 
that is really really important in terms of being able to maintain a bullish structure while descending and retracing right so i just kind of wanted to point that out the other really cool thing is that we broke out pretty convincingly out of this falling wedge from uh this uh descending you know last couple of months and it's looking like you know at least for now it's looking like we were able to validate uh this uh, downward trend line bounce off of that and actually uh, come back up this way so very very uh bullish last couple of days for polygon and very exciting to see uh what happens uh next and so before we get into what could happen in terms of price targets and price predictions just want to touch on a couple more things uh so first of all we love to see uh a, a retracement back from uh being below this uh 200 day moving average as well as the 100 day so that's something really interesting because you don't see this chart and we talk about this a lot on this channel because i think that it's really uh you know a good way to look at uh, how the chart flows and how long we're going to be below these these moving averages but in the charts history you know we're rarely below these averages you know we see here 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 and then obviously where we're at right now so only four times in, in total in the charts history have we been below the 100 or 200 day moving average. Uh, so just something to point out, right? It's, it's you know, most likely we're not going to be below that level for long. So that's something that I want folks to keep out for. You know, I think that we might be turning around here, may have found a bottom. So now let's kind of get into one last thing before we hop into price predictions. Love taking a look at the RSI just because, you know, it helps us kind of understand where we're at in terms of buying and selling pressure. So we have some space to work with. Um, you know, you can see we've kind of played in this uh, over uh, oversold uh, or sorry. Yeah, oversold uh, space. You're not oversold, but, you know, playing between 50 and 30 as opposed to playing between 50 and, and uh, 70. You know, that, that's that's better than playing up here for a long period of time, because obviously you can see what happens when we do that, which also correlates with the downward movement in the chart. So we do still have a little bit of room to play with the RSI. You know, you can see it, it, the chart has played here before and it's played for, um, you know, weeks at a time, um, you know, days at a time up here. So, you know, we could play in this area for a little bit, give some room for that chart to grow, for that chart to run, and then kind of stay up here for a little before kind of uh, retracing. So why do I bring up that point? I bring up that point to say um, that we could be due for a little bit of a run here uh, with minimal retracement to begin with and then retracement following that. So now that we're kind of starting to talk about the price action, starting to talk about the price targets, let's pull up a FIB extension and kind of talk about where we could be headed here. Or sorry, FIB retracement. So let's pull this up. So right now, um, what we're trying to run to, and I, I think we'll probably get there in the next couple days, uh, what we're trying to get to, actually probably sooner than the next couple days, the way that we're going right now, but um, what we wanna get to is a dollar and 64 cents. Uh, right here is a very critical level uh, in terms of the immediate short term. And once we break above that, you can see that that's kind of this uh, mini neckline, if you will, of this uh, fallout here. So you can see that there's that neckline right there. And so there could be some extra resistance whenever you see that happening. Um, you know, there tends to be a little extra resistance. And that kind of puts me to my next point, which is after we kind of cross uh, this $1.64, you know, obviously we have this FIB, you know, $1.88. Um, which we will have to cross and can give us trouble. But I really do think that this is going to be one of the hardest fibs uh, to cross. And this is where I think we start to hit extreme uh, resistance. So I, I think uh, this kind of gets me into my short term target. I think short term, we're looking at $2. Uh, hopefully within uh, the next couple weeks here, you know, can't put an exact timing on it. Um, but, you know, short term target, we're looking at $2. And why that is, is because I think that we have found a bottom here the way that we are turning around uh, the way that uh, we've kind of uh, validated this downward trend um, and now we're kind of starting to come up and our biggest test is going to be a dollar 64 uh, but this is going to be a huge test because this is a, a, again another one of these big necklines to cross so it's going to be interesting uh, to see how we do that 
Um, you know, we've been uh, seeing resistance there, you know, b uh, previously. So it's going to be interesting to see the outcome there. And then obviously, you know, I think when we look at uh, what could be happening in the long term, I think we can take some inspiration from um, previous fractals here to see what we could be looking at. So if we assume that this was our bottom and we lay that over here to where that bottom is, let me say that's the bottom. Uh, this would put us at, you know, something around three dollars and thirty cents uh, by August. Obviously, that's not, you know, you can't really count on anything uh, to happen. Obviously, in crypto, um, I, you know, based on this trend, based on what we're looking at, at here, you know, maybe we could go even higher than that. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, Matic. We have a lot of uh, bullish fundamental news coming out, um, you know, and on chain data is looking really, really, really good. More developers, more dApps over 7000 now. Um, so it's growing like crazy. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think that in terms of the short term, we've definitely found a bottom here. You can also see the uh, long term bullish structure here of the chart. Uh, looking really, really good all the way back from September. Uh, we have that uh, beautiful structure and then also all the way back from this time, you know, you can even see that uh, we're staying along this pretty good. Um, so, you know, we could still test, you know, uh, this trend line again, you know, we could come back down here uh, and test a trend line like this. You know that's t totally you know in play and of course we have this fib remember at once 1.64 so about right here so you know it's definitely possible that we come back after a little bit of a run here retest this trend line retest this trend line and then go up for that fib um but we also could break right through it and then head for those next two fibs up there uh but it's definitely going to be interesting to see where we go uh you know this is uh, a project that I would definitely keep your eyes out on. Uh, I think short term, just to recap, short term, we're looking for uh, a $2 uh, price target. And then uh, more long term, we're looking for $3.30. Uh, so right here, immediate short term, $1.64. And then our $2.00. 08 fib right here that'll be kind of our major resistance in the immediate short term so thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate the support like if you got some value out of it and make sure to drop your email in the form below to get that uh, free chart pattern guide thank you guys so much